Hi everyone, today I'll talk to you about predicting board game winners based on player move data using neural networks. So in 20, uh, July 2023, we looked at the end of the game and the cards that were chosen. And I'll zoom in here and you can see that uh, green and red cards had a high prediction in who was going to win with a 71% accuracy for that classification problem. Here we're going to be looking at a, uh, a similar classification problem but it's going to be who won based on the individual moves that were done, uh, move one, move two, move three, rather than at the end of the game, here's all the cards collected. All right, um, Seven Wonder Jewel is a simple game, but it's got difficult to separate classes. When you reach a certain threshold of points, that doesn't mean that you've won the game. There are two other ways to win the game, science and military, that confuse that a lot. And uh, the motivation for this is we want to design good games in the military uh, to teach people better than a classroom setting. But there's futility in playing a game longer than is needed. If you're trying to teach a learning objective or in a traditional game, you want to see who's going to win. You don't want to get 10 moves in the game and know who's going to win, but also know that you still have 100 moves left. All right, so we're looking at uh, a game being played right now, as, as you can see here. And I'm going to move my, my camera out of the way so you can see that they like, see they took Appian Way and then Appian Way was selected. And... Then we move through the different moves, and I noticed that it was keeping a log of what was happening. So I could take that log as data, and we could uh, get 2,000 different games I took uh, from this boardgamearena.com, and now that's my data set, 2,000 different games. And um, So there you have it, um, game logs uh, from Board Game Arena. Every row is a move, every column is a feature. And grab those features because of the full text of each move. So parsed them out. Move three. This second player selected Wonder Piraeus. So Piraeus gets a one because it occurred in the move. Selected Wonder gets a one. And then um, player one gets a zero. And did player one win? No, actually this entire game, player one lost. So after all the moves were finished, player one lost. And that's how a data file would be... Uh, would, would be classified here. So there's my data explanation. Uh, also, we chunked it off at just 40 moves. And what does that do? It took us, takes us about 53% of the way through a game. Um, we ended up with a cool little vocabulary that came out of that. And that will be important for the convolutional neural network later. But we took 850 words, brought it down to 220 words. And that was great because instead of player one discarded building, it became player one discarded building, which was awesome because we were able to have more meaning for that uh, there. And then um, rather than like a common thing that happens, player one discards a building, uh, now it's just one meaning that we just can memorize, uh, or the convolutional neural network can memorize. So we took 1,000 matches and did some tuning on that, and then took 2,000 matches, and the last 20% of those matches uh, were, were used as a test. And we followed the golden rule, didn't use the test data to help change the model, only used it to report accuracy. And uh, the input of the RNN, uh, we're going to do two methods, the RNN and the CNN. The RNN would be these those individual rows uh, that you saw of moves and ones and zeros because they are uh, uh, dependent on each other. Um, one affects the next. And the CNN would be game logs of that block of text and would be reduced by that vocabulary. Similarities with them would be the learning rate would be the same and the early stopping with a patience of three would be the same. Um, we're looking at a many to one type of RNN. A lot of these moves affecting the next moves, it's spitting out an output of did player one win or not. We're, we have an LSTM, which is a type of RNN we're using. But uh, sad to report, the, com the RNN, no matter how complex we made it, uh, didn't really do so hot. You see, not, not much better than 60%. And actually, as the observed moves increases, the accuracy increases only slightly. Um, or uh, has some decreases there. <laughs> That's, that was a weird situation there. But we added dropout, and uh, and that so that did help it a little bit. It added bidirectionality, didn't really change things so much though. What we really needed was, uh, you'll see later, was actually more data. So two thousand games was was not enough. Here we uh, parameter tuned with only one thousand games there. Um, now with the CNN, we had uh, we took those two uh, one thousand games, and we had a to highest token size of four thousand eight hundred eighty games. Any other games we padded out. And then we uh, went through different layers. So I'm going to talk to you real quick through these different layers. You had an embedding layer that gave meaning to these tokens. The dropout layer, this would randomly drop out different uh, nodes and so that we wouldn't rely on certain ones uh, too much and would prevent overfitting, right? Uh, 
Um, you have the one-dimensional uh, convolutional layer. This layer performs convolution operations on the input data. We have a max pooling that would reduce the dimensionality. And then we'd have another dropout, another convolution, another max pooling. And then finally, an output of who wins or loses. And we'd have a kernel size of five. So we're looking at chunks of five words and moving through because words near each other would have more meaning to each other. They, they would, they would uh, kind of have that convolution uh, across five words would uh, move two wouldn't matter so much with move 22, but might matter with move three's words, you know, with tokens. Uh, and so that kernel size of five actually helped out. It got higher than 70% accuracy in the 1000 games. And then uh, kernel size of three, not so great. Uh, kernel size of nine, also not so great. And then here's going to be our analysis techniques as we go through the 2000 games. So in the 1000 games, selecting our hyperparameters, here's what we had ended up deciding to use. Same thing with the CNN. And then we have some results. Um, so the precision, um, happy to report, stayed pretty consistent, 55% to 70%. The recall was all over the place with both the RNN and the CNN, but especially the RNN. Um, balanced accuracy, we had a wide amount of ranges. There was a weird fluke that happened with one of the RNNs, but uh, for the most part, uh, we we can just put it out to an average of 57% balanced accuracy for an RNN and 67% balanced accuracy for the CNNs. And then um, there you have the different confusion matrices of similar uh, accuracies. So in the discussion part, the, you have these RNNs and the... Um, it's really not much better than chance at the start of the game, but as you increase the amount of games played and the uh, the observed moves, here we're looking at 2,000 games played now, and uh, and it actually is uh, breaking 60% accuracy as you add more moves. So there's an upward trend. Um, there does seem to be somewhat of a drop-off sometimes around uh, 30 to 40 moves. Um, and then uh, the convolutional neural network results show a 72% accuracy so that was the highest we ever got and i thought it was interesting there was a drop between five and ten uh observed moves and that's kind of cool to look at because a, a player who's an expert of the game would be looking at the uh different moves that were done in the game and they would see uh hey these uh in the beginning of the game it's very important that the player selects the right wonders to win the game an expert would be looking for that and those first five moves show those uh those uh things that an expert would be looking for. Uh, also try to get ex kind of some explainability with the uh, drop-off that kept happening around like 28 moves every so often. And I found that, uh, so player one would uh, would start the game and eight, or would, would be, have this extra turn basically on move 28, and that would be a large factor in deciding if they won or not. All right, so future work, I could try to parse this out into different uh, types of wins, point science or military, could advance this to include more expansions of the game. A lot of things that could be done with the game. Also, this could be used for educational game development. You, like I said, don't want to have a game that takes uh, you know 10 moves to know who's going to win and then a, an hour and a half longer to actually finish the game. That's not useful. And then uh, predicting learning objectives achieved in an educational game rather than predicting a, a win or a loss. Then guessing who will win a real-world scenario, a real-world uh, global dispute uh, based on X moves into the situation to advise combatant commanders. Uh, in conclusion, uh, what percentage of match a, a match from a variable termination game needs to be analyzed for accurate predictions of metrics such as a winning player? Well, the evidence suggests that the winner of a 7 winners dual match could be determined with greater than 70% accuracy given 40% moves, just like an expert could at the game. Anyways, thank you so much for your time and have a great rest of your day.